Greetings, I'm Reverend John O'Toole. I hope you're having a great day, because <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> so, today I'm talking about seeds. Now, right now, this is the time, um, as everybody knows, it's around the virus. Seeds have been very hard to find. Now, you'd be surprised to hear that in all reality, but there's been a lot of people saying, hey, I can grow some food for myself. Not enough people are saying that. Everybody should have some way of growing things in their house or in their yard. And there are so many methods to growing outside that you don't have to take these and stick them in the ground. <laughs> Now, I'm a firm believer of microgreens. You can grow those in your house. You just need some lighting. You don't have to get as fancy as what you see behind me. And it's always hard to tell. Over here, where you see the racks, and you've got some LED shop lights, and you can grow a lot of microgreens for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for local restaurants, for a farmer's market. You could do whatever you want. And it's a great way to have a little extra money coming in. Or you can barter your greens with your friends and family for other things, like, say, chicken eggs. If you, uh, you don't want to raise chickens, but you want some farm fresh eggs, you could barter your greens for them. And you can certainly grow stuff outside and barter that stuff too. Or you could get your friends together and everybody grow something different. <laughs> but that's enough of that chit chat. Let's get back to our topic about storing seeds. Now, it's a great time to do is when you go out uh, in these bargain stores, like uh, what is the, what's that general store? I don't know. It's that discount store that has the word general in it. It'll come to me after the video because that's how it works. You know, or your big, big lots or just the hardware stores or Home Depot or Tractor Supply or you can order online. Now that's what I've done. I've ordered online and I have ordered from, this is not a plug, but I do prefer them, is Johnny Seeds. So that's who I like to grow like to buy my seeds from it's a local company that's up in maine and uh, they'll ship out relatively quickly and it's supposed to be an employee owned so so what i'm going to do today and i wish i could find my funnel and i'm looking all over for it and i can't find it but I have a funnel for mason jars. What I'm going to do is that I have these. These are uh, 10 cc oxygen absorber packets. And they're just iron that absorbs oxygen. They don't harm your food at all. You can use it to store foods in mason jars or buckets, depending on the size. You can buy a lot of beans or rice, pasta, different kinds of things. Not flour, because flour can go bad, but you can get the, uh, the red wheat, and then you can grind it yourself down the road if you need to. And you'd put these into the containers and it absorbs the oxygen and creates a vacuum. It's a nice way of doing it. There's other ways to do the vacuum. You can use your uh, vacuum sealer to create a vacuum in the jars. So I have mason jars. And what I wish to do is I'm going to fill up these mason jars and wow. 
I already had a vacuum. <laughs> like for example, these seeds here, these are uh, red Rambo radish micrograins. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all my jars filled before I open up this packet. Because once you open this packet, they are all going to start sucking up oxygen. So the best thing to do is to open the packet, put them in all your jars, then put these into a mason jar and seal it up as quick as possible. It's a race. And uh, that's basically what we're going to do. It would be nice if I had my funnel. It would be a lot easier to do it. So let's see. We need to tip the camera. Do 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 do. Motion magic. So I have some over here. There we go, see? We're, going, we're not going to put the lid on yet because we're going to do that later. And I have some labels here. It's always good to label your canning. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it. Rambo radish. Micro. There we go. There we go. So you put that on the jar so that if somebody else is looking through the jars, they'll know what it is. I know what rainbow radish looks like, but if you have somebody else Looking at the jar, it'll be labeled. So much glare. There you go. Now, you see what I have over here. I also have, now the other nice thing about the oxygen absorbers versus just putting them into a jar is that it'll kind of take, a, help with a lot of the moisture. So, they'll stay, you know, when you hear about places like uh, Egypt, when they found all those seeds, In the uh, pyramids, they were in a cool, dry place. Some place where moisture can't really get into them. So storing them in jars. Now the other way you could do it, if you have a vacuum sealer, you could store them into vacuum bags. 
start them that way. Not going to be able to fill all of them in there. So I might just have to use these for my own use. See what else do we have over here? Salad bix. Now I haven't been able to get salad bix to grow in my house, in my weeds room. I don't really know why. These are field peas. Really wish I had a better camera handle. Now these are microgreen peas. The nice thing about microgreen peas are that the leaves don't have that, the greens don't have that gummy taste that you get with regular peas. Boy. So even children will like peas better than microgreen peas versus the regular pea fruit. So that's going to look like we're going to need two bags for that. Two jars. So I guess we'll just do two jars. And there are different types of uh, microgreen uh, peas. And you just have to find the ones that you like. Now the difference between the field peas that we grow out in the field and the peas we use for microgreens is how they are stored. You could use microgreens uh, outdoors, but you can't use the field peas necessarily indoors because they might have a coating on them or a fungus on them that you may not like to have indoors. I, you can grow, certainly grow field peas, regular field peas outside and then uh, just harvest them when they get up to be yee high of a grasshopper instead of waiting for them to, to start growing out their vines. You gotta make sure that you label your jars as you're going along because it'd be really easy to not remember what's in what jar, if the seeds look alike. Well, 
like I almost put this on the wrong jar. <laughs> Can you imagine such a thing? <laughs> Snag it out of the jar. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Now, I have a five pound bag of sunflower seeds. <laughs> Somehow or other in my mind, I wasn't thinking that the bottle was this big. place, which I still can't remember the name of it, and they'd get packs of seeds for like 10 cents an envelope. That would normally be $2. So it's well worth well worth it to go bargain shopping. Once people stop planting seeds, which is kind of like right about now, throughout the summer. But if the seeds get dried out or they get damp, they may not actually grow. So, you can store seeds is in a bucket. Like for example, I really, maybe I should package these in a Home Depot bucket with a gamma lid and then throw a bunch of packs in the bucket and seal them that way. But this way I can just do one jar at a time and uh, it will, uh, It'll go quicker. So this may take some time. We're going to use the magic of video to fill up all these jars. And hopefully I have enough jars. Otherwise, I'm going to be putting them in a little bucket.
So I filled up one, one, two, five jars, quart jars of sunflowers. And uh, I have still have another five pound bucket left. Oh, look what I found. Ha 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 ha. Fool me once, fool me twice. Fool me as many times as you want. I found my funnel. Can you imagine it'd be in the bucket? <laughs> he goes like that. <laughs> that is so silly. So what I'm going to do is put the other five pound bag in here. I'm not going to take it out of the bag. And uh, these seeds are, oh, uh, maybe a year old actually because I've been under the weather. I haven't been growing anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my absorbers into these jars. And then the rest of them are going to go in the bucket with the rest of the seeds. And hopefully I'll remember just that. And uh, that'll have to do for today because uh, it's all I'm going to do. Unless they break out another case of jars. The packet. the packets in the jars. bucket and uh, so can you see that what's nice about the gamma lids now I don't know why they call them gamma lids but uh, they uh, they're good for storing foods. You can store anything you want in it. Like you can store dog foods or rice. So you can. You know, versus using a regular lid, bucket lid, it's kind of permanent. And once you you open it up, you uh, can't reseal it. You, you have to break the tabs on a lid, and you can't reuse bucket lids very easily. So these are nice for reusable. So you can store dog food, you can store grains, Seeds, toilet paper, diapers. You can turn. You can keep it as like a personal vault. Granted, it's not going to protect it from fire, but they'll protect it from water. So, if you want to put all your personal papers or your uh, pictures or albums or stuff in there, uh, CDs or DVDs or hard drives or, you know, if you got the picture, you can store them in the buckets. It will keep critters out. And I've tried it. I've filled it up with sunflower seeds and put them into a barn 
and not have them be attacked by uh, squirrels or field mice. So I know it works. That, uh, yeah. So you gotta take the, your jars and then you're gonna store them away. Maybe in your pantry or, uh, you know, in here I have a shelf behind me that I'm gonna put them on. And uh, that'll work fine. So until next time, grow something. Grow yourself some microgreens. There's lots of videos out there. I have a whole series on how I grow microgreens. And there's a lot on YouTube. If you look up my YouTube channel, it's Rev John O'Toole. And uh, you'll see this charming face on the channel. And there's all kinds of videos there for growing microgreens. There are thousands of them. Just over the last few years, a lot of people are growing microgreens because it's so darn easy and uh, that's so quick. You may have to wait two or three months for veggie crops to mature, whereas microgreens are usually ready in two weeks, two to three weeks. Sometimes sooner, sometimes longer. All depends on what you pick. So until next time, digging some dirt. Yeah. <laughs>